I thought it would be a good idea to uh, give a couple of examples of how we can use some of the things we just learned about with the photoelectric effect and quantized uh, energy for photons. So if you look at this first example here that I wrote out, um, I've tried to make these look um, a little bit like IB questions would, at least the level of difficulty. So the first one right here is actually very, very easy. This is just to get you going. Uh, the second one then is going to have more to do with uh, photoelectric effect. But let's just look at the first one here. We have incoming light has a wavelength of 633 nanometers. And the question is, what's the energy of the photons in electron volts? So the very first thing to do is, uh, I think, to look at, first of all, what does this mean, 633 nm? And in case you forget, you can always look it up on your trusty equation sheet if we go right near the beginning. Uh, second page, it actually tells you, oops, sorry, third page. It tells you, in case you forget, that nanometer, which is an n, is 10 to the minus 9. So just in case you forget, you can always look it up. So we have our wavelength then is 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. By the way, this would be like a nice uh, laser. I used to work with lasers. So um, this 633, the reason I picked that one is, uh, I think if you if you combine helium and neon in a, ga in a gas chamber, so it's called a helium neon laser, you get a nice uh, 633 nanometer laser beam. So that will look red. So assuming you have this uh, red sort of light coming in, what's the energy of each of the photons? Now, it's a good idea to look back at your equation sheet and see if we can find the right equations here. So the energy of a photon is E equals HF. That's the equation I'm going to use. Okay, so uh, it's important to actually go ahead and look at that here. I just wanna make sure I make my pens the right size and everything here. So I'm going to use the equation E equals HF. Now when I actually do this though, I want to, well, I need to know the frequency. So maybe uh, it's a good idea to review again how we get from wavelength to frequency. And uh, hopefully you remember your equation from uh, waves. Let's see if I can find that. There's topic four. We have the wave equation here, V equals F lambda. I'm gonna need that one, V equals F lambda. So if I use V equals F lambda, well, if it's light, I know the speed of light is not just V, it's actually this special letter we use, C equals F lambda. If I want to get f by itself, then I can say that f is then c over lambda. So I can take this and I can use it in here. In other words, my energy then will be equal to h times c over lambda. And then it's just a matter of actually uh, putting everything in. So my energy then in joules. By the way, if I do this with h like this, I'm going to get uh, units of joules. So um, my energy will be equal to... And let's look up what H is. In case you forget, you can look it up again on your equation sheet. Second page. H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So I'll put that in. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times uh, speed of light. Hopefully you know that. In case you forgot, it's again on your equation sheet. But it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Right, light does go really fast. Divide that by my wavelength of 633 times 10 to the minus 9. This will get me my answer in joules. And what I want to show you, of course, is how to do this yourselves with your own calculator. A lot of students, uh, surprisingly, still make mistakes with how to use your calculator. So I'll just walk you through what to do. So first of all, of course, I would do 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Hopefully you know to use a little e there. That saves you from doing times 10 to the power of. I'm always surprised again by people not knowing that, but it's a, it's a helpful hint. Oops. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. I want to take that. I want to multiply it by 3 times 10 to the 8. I want to take that answer and divide it by, I'm going to use brackets to be absolutely safe, 633 times 10 to the minus 9. I'm going to get an answer then of, uh, we have to look at how many significant figures I can use. I can use 3 here. So I can say 3.14 times 10 to the minus 19. That'll be my answer here. 3.14 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. But we want it in electron volts. So we have to remember again what an electron volt is. One electron volt is just that. It's a one volt times one charge of an electron. So in that case, it's going to be, well, a little e from your equation sheet is actually 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules. So if I want to find out about this compared to this, well, I just divide it. Okay, so my E then will just be 
3.14 times 10 to the minus 19. Divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, because that's how many uh, units here. That's joules. This is actually joules per EV. And if I'm dividing by a fraction, the units of EV go on the top, the joules cancel out. So I end up with units of EV, which is exactly what I wanted, electrons. So I look at this and I just got to divide my numbers then. So this answer, I have to divide it by 1.6. Oops. Got to be careful here. Times 10 to the minus 19. Close my brackets. So I get 1.96 electron volts. So almost 2 electron volts. That's my answer here. So that's that one. Let's do the next one. Here we have light of 200 nanometers, and if you know your visible light, uh, this is not going to be visible. We won't see this light. It'll look like nothing's going on, but actually something could be. So this, for example, is um, bluer than blue, because blue is about 400-ish nanometers. So this is past blue, so this would be actually ultraviolet, so we wouldn't see this. But in any case, if we had uh, light of this wavelength, that's incident on a metal surface, and we know the stopping potential. The question is, the first one, what's the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron? And just to be a jerk, I wanted it in uh, joules and in electron volts, just to get you good practice with this. So the very first one right here, we want to find maximum kinetic energy. We'd better look at our trusty equation sheet to see if we can figure out what to do. So if I look at the first one right here, well, our uh, photoelectric effect equations, those are right here. These are these ones right here. That's photoelectric effect. Electric. So if I look at this then, I want to know what now. The first question says, what's the maximum kinetic energy? So if I want that, hopefully you can see I want E max. Now I can find E max with this equation, but remember I was showing you how this HF equals that HF, and this phi equals HF zero, and E max equals EV. That's probably the easiest way to do it in this case is to set that right there. So E max equals EV. Okay, so I'm going to use that uh, idea. So again, just to make it absolutely clear, we had HF, uh, which equals, and um, I just want to make sure I'm absolutely clear with everything here. So uh, if I do this right here, I had um, HF equals phi. This is just from your equation sheet here. Um, it was phi plus E max. And the other equation we had was HF equals HF0 plus EV. And because of this, I know that E max equals EV. And because of this right here, well, I can actually find the answer in electron volts really easily. If I know that the voltage is 5, it turns out uh, the answer then, well, with two significant figures, because here we have 3, here we have 2, so I can only use that. I can do the answer in electron volts right away. That's the easiest question ever. Right, just because V is 5. So 5 times E is 5 E. But uh, if we want to do this with uh, joules, that's maybe one extra step, so that's no problem. We can actually find it in joules. So E max will be, well, the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, times 5 volts. Again, I do that with my trusty little calculator here. All right, so we'll i got to turn it on and clear it. So 1.6, uh, got to be careful here, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. I don't know why it keeps doing that. There we go, 19. And I want to take that and multiply that by 5, and I get an answer of 8 times 10 to the minus 19. Now i got to use two significant figures, so we'll make it 8.0 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that could be my first answer. So either of these right here is correct.